Welcome to the Introduction to the Clinical Room video tutorial. This video will provide you with an overview of the standard layout that you will encounter within the patient rooms. We will look at both the layout and the equipment that is found here, from the sphygma manometer to the bed. Some of the tools that we will look at will include the otoscope, the ophthalmoscope, tuning forks and reflex hammer, q-tips, and tongue depressor. Normally, the patient will be seated at a side chair beside the desk within the room. Occasionally, the patient may already be on the bed within the room ready for the physical exam. Typically, you will occupy the other chair at the desk or the small doctor rolling stool. Try to avoid standing over a patient when eliciting the history, as this may feel unduly intimidating. As well, always maintain a professional distance when taking the history, although at some particularly emotional times, Closer contact may be warranted. One of the oft forgotten but important pieces of equipment within the room is the clock. Used not only to track time and maintain pacing during an interview, clocks, particularly those with a second hand, which these rooms typically have, can be used as a 15 second counting tool while checking the pulse. Normally, this is located on the wall near the door, but can be found on any of the walls. It's always a good idea to look for it, see it, and use it. One of the first pieces of equipment that you want to locate within the room is the sink hand wash area. Sometimes there will be an alcohol-based foam pump by the cupboard within the room. The foam is released by inverting the tube and then depressing the nozzle. Wash your hands completely until the alcohol has dried within the foam. Prior to performing the physical exam, it is imperative that you wash your hands as hygiene is not only important for maintaining a healthy environment, but also for establishing rapport with the patient. We all get told drape appropriately, but where are they kept? Look in the drawers in the side of the bed. Gowns and then drapes. Patients should be gowned and draped appropriately throughout the entire exam, no exceptions. Some exam rooms are cold and patients may have been waited, waiting there for a little while while you finish up with another patient. Make sure that they are as comfortable as possible before even beginning to take their history so that you can build good rapport right off the bat. You don't want a patient who's cold and just wants to leave. Gowns themselves are typically open at the back except for in some instances, such as the breast exam, where a patient may have the gown opening at the front. The drapes are typically folded up, so open them up before handing them to the patient. It's the little things that make a big difference. When it comes to the patient bed, there are four aspects that you need to be aware of. The first is the step that helps the patient come up to the bed. This step is typically a pullout that is located at the bottom of the foot of the bed. Ensure that this is pulled out and accessible for your patient when moving to the physical exam. Alternatively, some beds can be raised and lowered electronically. So ensure that the bed is at its lowest position so the patient can safely get into the bed. During some portions of the exam, you will also find it necessary to have the patient lie back flat onto the bed. To make this very comfortable for the patient, you need to be familiar with two aspects. One is the raising and lowering of the head of the bed, and the second is sliding out the footrest. It is crucial that the footrest is slid out when the patient is lying flat on their back. The footrest is typically found at the foot of the bed, and it is tucked in and just needs to be slid out fully when the patient is lying supine. As far as raising and lowering the head of the bed, on manual control beds, there is typically a lever on the side of the bed that controls this function. Typically, depressing the lever down allows you to push down on the head of the bed to lower it. With the patient lying supine on the bed with their added weight, make sure that before you depress the lever, you have them sit up off the bed to ensure that they, with their added weight, don't cause the bed to come crashing down. Also, Make sure that you don't put your hand as a source of support for their added weight as it may exceed your capabilities of holding up the bed. 
causing injury both to the patient and to yourself. As far as raising the head, because the lever controls the stop function, all we need to do is simply lift up on the head of the bed. On electronic beds, there are either foot pedals or push buttons that allow you to raise and lower the head of the bed. The sphygmomanometer, a powerful word in Scrabble, is what we use in conjunction with the stethoscope to measure blood pressure. Take as many opportunities as you can to become familiar with how to use this important device. The critical aspect of its use involves the valve. If you haven't heard it yet, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Make sure you have the valve completely closed by winding it completely to the right, otherwise you will be using the inflation bulb fruitlessly. Also, when tightening this valve, make sure you don't over tighten the valve because when loosening it, you'll typically be using only one hand. So become familiar with the unit before you go ahead and take pressure readings. The other problem that can occur is within the tubing that carries the air back and forth. Any damage to this tubing will allow air to escape, making your reading more difficult. So while it's not critical to check the tubing each time, if there is a problem with the air leak, don't forget to check that. Another very standard piece of equipment that is found within the patient rooms is the otoscope and ophthalmoscope. As we will find out, the otoscope is not simply used to look within the ear as its name implies. Both it and its cousin, the ophthalmoscope, are magnifying glasses with non-view obstructing sources of light. Most of the otoscope's functions are found within its head. The handle, in turn, typically contains a battery that will power the device. Turning on the otoscope depends upon the model, but with battery operated device, the on switch involves depressing a collar lock and then rotating an intensity adjustment collar. Once you are finished, do not forget to turn the intensity collar down and turn off the device so that batteries do not drain. And also to replace the unit into its charger to recharge it. A reusable speculum, normally found in close proximity to where the otoscope is housed, is attached to the end of the head. Placing it on the head and again turning it to the right, again remember righty tighty, lefty loosey, will secure it in place, ensuring that it does not come off during the exam. As far as uses go, the otoscope as we mentioned is not limited simply to the ear exam but can be also used for the nasal and oral exam, both within its scope of use. As well, it can be used across many spectrums, including transillumination of hydrocele and maxillary sinus, detection of strabismus and pupillary reflex during the eye exam, and using the speculum for cryotherapy in dermatologic situations, for controlling the spray of liquid nitrogen. The ophthalmoscope is the other tool that we will be using, particularly during the eye exam. The first step in using the ophthalmoscope is in fact room lighting. Before going ahead with the use, we're going to go ahead and turn on another source of light and then make sure that you turn off the main lights within the room. Doing so will allow you to use the ophthalmoscope at its best. In performing the neuro exam, there is a portion that will involve sensation testing, requiring sharp versus dull discrimination. We accomplish this in the exam room by taking advantage of the long Q-tip. Q-tips are typically found on the shelf within the bins, and there are two Q-tips within each package. We actually only need to use one, and in fact, we only need to use half of one, so by breaking it in half, we will have both a sharp end and then using the cotton tip the other dull end. By demonstrating this to a patient we can go ahead and complete this part of the physical exam. 
The tongue depressor will also be found on the shelf, typically within one of the bins or within its box. Like its name implies, its primary purpose is for depressing the tongue and examining the posterior oropharynx. However, like most things within the room, it can be used for other things. For example, it can be used for pushing away the inner buccal mucosa to appreciate the gum health of your patient. As well, during the neuro exam, it can also be used to help elicit the Babinski reflex. The reflex hammer that is typically found within the exam rooms is the Taylor or Tomahawk reflex hammer. Made of a soft rubber, the head has two ends, the apex and the base. The base is rounded and shaped like the lateral surface of the extended palm and is used most often for eliciting the tendon reflex. The apex, on the other hand, is designed to reach the biceps tendon at the bend of the arm. The end of the hammer, which is with its pointed tip, can be used for eliciting cutaneous reflexes, such as the Babinski reflex. Even though we have already washed our hands and are performing a physical exam, there are portions of it that will require the use of gloves. For example, the oral exam. It may be disconcerting to both you and a patient to have your open hands entering their mouth to perform and palpate the oral mucosa. So don a pair of gloves, which will be found on the shelf here, and then discard them once you're completed. Gloves will also be required when performing the prostate exam and testing for occult blood within the stool, and also for the pelvic exam. You will also find on the shelf open gauze within the exam room located on the bins. The gauze will be used for a number of functions, but of note during the physical exam, it can be used to hold the tongue during the oral exam. Gauze can sometimes be found in different sizes, the smaller ones being referred to as 2 by 2s sometimes the larger ones being referred to as 4 by 4s Also on the shelf, you will find a couple of more tools that can be useful. The first one are alcohol swabs for cleaning that are found typically within the exam room. These should be used to clean off your stethoscope and to clean off reusable equipment if it has come into close contact with the patient, such as the otoscope or even the ophthalmoscope, and the inner surface of the sphygmo manometer. As well, every once in a while, you will find a glass of water that will be included within the patient room. Remember to use this when doing the thyroid exam to allow the patient to sip on this.